Hello friends, this is Big Daddy Cash back again with a recital done my way. I call this Reflections and Past Recollections. It's done in the form of a diary. January 2nd, 1936. It's a quarter past two in the morning and I'm struggling for my first breath. My mommy is screaming with pain. She hollers at my daddy, I'm going to kill you for making me go through this, you son of a bitch. Then she starts crying. During this whole ordeal, I almost got hung swinging back and forth on the umbilical cord. After I was freed from the hanging cord, the nurse slapped me silly. That's about all I can remember on the day I was pulled out of my mommy's womb. Except I heard Mommy apologize to Daddy for calling him a son of a bitch. <clears throat> February 14th, 1944. I remember this day just like it was yesterday. Imagine if you can. My pet goat and I burnt the whole sugar house jail down and about 20 acres of wheat. Sure enough, it was a multi alarm fire and a blazing show for a whole bunch of our neighbors. As I recall, this is how it happened. I tied the old goat to my little red wagon, which by chance had a bale of hay in it. And then I set fire to the hay. And old nanny took off running over the lawns and across the fields to the deserted old jailhouse. I probably, could have, probably would have got away with it, except the old goat came back with the evidence. Instead of being punished, I should have got a medal. You see, that broken down jailhouse was an eyesore, and I kept all those nasty weeds from spreading. Sounds like fiction, but it's truth, and all it cost the community was a slice of humble pie. Congratulate me. I caused the main event on Valentine's Day. January 15th, 1947. This day was not as exciting as the day in 1944, but it's the day my little brother and I set a record and our picture hit the front page of the newspaper. The picture alone was worth the price of the paper, I can't explain how this happened, but it happened, and that's a fact. You can find it in Ripley's Believe It or Not. My brother and I passed childhood diseases back and forth until we both had ten diseases, all at the same time. Let's see, there was measles, whooping cough, chicken pox, mumps. Oh, hell, I can't remember all of them, but we had them all. Now that's some kind of record. <clears throat> June 12th, 1952. The reflections I've written down are not made up. They're a product of my recollections. This story, you're definitely going to have a hard time believing. But it's true. Lady Dyer was the boys' counselor at East High. She was actually a historical part of the institution. In other words, she was the founding father or mother, whichever the case may be. On this day in June of 1952, she caught a whole bunch of us smoking out in back of the Dairy Queen alongside the high school. She literally dragged us by our ears to her office and set us down on one of those cold hardwood benches. However, we guys were the rough, tough ones, and we had our reputations to think about. This is not something that was planned. It happened on the spur of the moment. One of my friends had a toy squirt gun that looked like the real McCoy. He pulled it out and pointed it at the old lady Dyer, and in a harsh, tough voice, he told her to shut up and sit down. Then we all joined in on the game. There was a roll of duct tape on Dyer's desk, so we duct taped her hands and feet to her chair 
and put duct tape over her mouth. Then we all lit up our smokes, hooped and hollered and danced around the chair, blowing smoke rings in her face. Needless to say, I was kicked out of school. In the next 90 days, I was a guest in the Gray Bar Hotel. July 9, 1952. I joined the Peace Corps with a friend of mine, Bill Ager. I was only 16, and I had to lie about my age, but my false ID was pretty convincing, and Bill, who was old enough, vouched for me, and we got through without any question. August 11, 1953. Bill and I were both students of martial arts, so right away we were transferred to the Green Beret as martial arts instructors. In case you don't know what the Green Beret is, it's a distinct unit of the Special Operation Forces, men and women trained to accomplish the virtual impossible. August 11, 1953 is the date the Green Beret was sent behind the enemy lines to rescue 18 American officers. Major Mike Mitchell was one of them. It was my pleasure to lead this mission, and everything went as smooth as Swiss clockwork. And I'm proud to say I was honored with the Medal of Valor for conduct up and beyond the call of duty. If that sounds like I'm bragging, well, I am. I'm proud to be an American, and I want everybody to know it. I also have a chest full of ribbons that I've had framed and I hang it in my living room for all my friends to see. December 15th, 1953. This was the day I applied for a hardship leave of absence. Early in the morning I got a call informing me that my grandmother had had a stroke and was, wasn't expected to live. She was the bonding agent that kept our family together. Without her, I'm sure that we would have drifted apart. She was the one person in my life that gave me unconditional love, and I worshipped the ground she walked on. I know that she'd want me to be with her on her last remaining hours, so that was the most important reason that I wanted to go home. But it wasn't the only reason. It was my mother that called me with the news about my grandma, but she also told me about my dad who had fallen and injured his back and wouldn't be able to work for at least six months. So she impressed upon me how much I was needed at home at this present time. So I asked my commanding officer for a six month leave of absence. He granted the leave immediately and even arranged for a hop home on Air Force 707. December 17, 1953. My flight landed at Hill Air Force Base in Utah just before midnight on the 17th. My home was in Salt Lake City, Utah, which is about 35 miles from Hill. Normally there's uh, no transportation at this late hour, but as luck would have it, I met a master sergeant that said he'd take me to Salt Lake and drop me off at my destination. I decided that my de destination would be the LDS hospital where my grandmother was. December the 18th, 1953. When my grandmother woke up in the morning, I was sitting beside her, holding her hand. And she died at that moment. Thank you for listening.